The Pentagon now says a U.S. Navy destroyer shot down several missiles and drones that were launched from Yemen. Let's bring in our chief national security analyst, Jim Shudo. You're working the story for us, Jim. Yeah. What do we know about this intercept and the risks, potentially, of escalation in the Middle East? Well, Wolf, when, when my colleague Oren Lieberman and I first reported this this afternoon, what we knew at the time was that a U.S. destroyer off of Yemen had intercepted multiple projectiles, missiles, target unknown. It had successfully destroyed those missiles. The question was, where were they headed? Were they targeting those U.S. ships or elsewhere? What we learned over the afternoon, as the Pentagon said, is that they believe those missiles were headed northwest towards Israel. Of course, the danger there was that the Houthi rebels, which the U.S. believes fired these missiles, they are backed by Iran. They follow orders from Iran. Was this uh, an instance where another front is being opened up against Israel in this war there. As you know, there are U.S. assets around the region. You have two carrier groups in the eastern Mediterranean. Of course, you have numerous ships in the Arabian Gulf uh, and off the coast of Yemen, and they could use their capabilities, including anti-missile capabilities, to take out potential threats. And that's what appears to have happened here. Of course, the danger, Wolf, uh, is escalation not only involving Israel, another front opened up on Israel by, uh, in effect, a proxy group, the Houthis, controlled by Iran, but also you have U.S. forces in the line of fire in the Eastern Med, in the Arabian Gulf, and off the coast of Yemen, and it shows you, Wolf, the potential for escalation of this war. Does Iran choose to open up another front, a front through its proxies, whether the Houthi rebels or Hezbollah north of Israel? And do U.S. forces uh, pose a danger, in effect, of getting involved? Uh, that's the real concern here of U.S. officials, and it's why you've heard the U.S. president from the beginning say, if you're thinking about getting into this, Iran and others, don't think about it. Yeah, I keep saying don't, don't, yeah. don't. Jim Shudo, uh, excellent report. Thank Thanks. you very much. So let's discuss this and more with retired General uh, Frank McKenzie. He serves uh, as commander of the U.S. military's Central Command. He, he did serve as the U.S. military central commander, which is responsible, as we all know, for the Middle East. General, thanks so much for joining us. How concerning are these intercepted missiles from Iran-backed Houthis uh, in Yemen? Are they trying to take advantage of the tensions in the region that already exist? Well, Wolf, it certainly looks like an escalation, uh, opening another front against Israel, attacking from another direction. But it matches other activities that Iran's been backing for the past few days including attacks by their proxy forces against our uh, our soldiers and Marines in Iraq and in Syria. So it's a it's sort of a pattern, and, and, and frankly, it's disturbing. Yeah, this is very disturbing indeed. And on Israel's northern border, as you well know, the IDF exchanged even more fire with Hezbollah today. Uh, the UN says one person was killed. Just how much could this conflict escalate to multi-fronts? So uh, the possibility of an attack, uh, a large scale attack against Israel from Lebanon, initiated by Lebanese Hezbollah, is really the most significant threat I think Israel faces. They have many, many thousands of highly precise rockets and missiles that have been provided by Iran. They brought them across Syria into, into Lebanon. They're, they're ready to fire. They're hidden in schools and mosques and in places and in private homes. It would be a very difficult targeting problem for Israel. However, uh, Lebanese Hezbollah will make its own calculation. I think if they launch a large-scale attack against Israel, Israel will come in very heavy against them. And in 2006, it was a bloody war for both sides, but Lebanese Hezbollah was hurt pretty badly from that. And so I think they'll have to, they'll have to think very carefully before they decide to come into this conflict. Uh, good point. Uh, Israel's defense minister general, he said today uh, that troops will soon see the inside of Gaza but explain why you've said a full-scale Israeli ground invasion would become, and I'm quoting you now, a bloodbath. I think an Israeli ground invasion of uh, Gaza would be the most difficult military operation anyone could contemplate. Uh, I've trained for a lot of my career in operations in an urban environment. It's densely packed. Uh, you're fighting below the ground in sewers and in tunnels. You're fighting on the surface of the earth. You're fighting in residential buildings and high-rise buildings. At low altitude, Israeli drones will proliferate, but Hamas will also fly drones. Overhead, the IDF, the Israeli Air Force, the IAF, I should say, the Israeli Air Force will own the skies and be able to deliver precision fires. But here's the thing. The Israelis will be very attentive to the law of war. They will attempt to avoid mass human casualties. 
probably not going to be able to do that completely, but they will be, they will do everything they can to avoid that. On the other hand, what Hamas wants and needs are mass casualty events in order to operate in the information space. They will use in effect, not only the hostages that are there in Gaza as human shields, they will use the entire population of Gaza as human shields. It will be a very difficult tactical problem for the Israelis. I know they're poised down there on the border, ready to go in. I don't know when that will occur. I do know this. The one thing the Israelis can control is when this starts. And so they'll look very carefully at what will give them the maximum tactical advantage when they go in. Wolf. Israel doesn't appear to have a, a specific plan, at least not that we know of, for Gaza. If it does eliminate Hamas, goes in on the ground, eliminates Hamas, how important is it to prepare for what comes after potentially an Israeli ground invasion? That is the most important part of the plan, as we know from our own experience in Iraq. A successful combat operation needs to be succeeded by some form of a political event that sets, that sets a path for the future. Uh, and the Israelis need to give a great deal of thought to how Gaza is going to be governed after combat operations are complete. And, you know, the choices aren't great. Hamas has clearly duped us, the Israelis, and the world for the last few years uh, by, you know, uh, looking moderate while planning for this blood, for this terrible attack that occurred in southern Israel. So I don't know that they're the partner. Uh, there are other possibilities for partners. You would hope that other nations in the region will get involved. But all wars have to have a political end. And the Israelis need to think very carefully about how they're going to craft the political end of this war. Yeah, good point. Uh, General Frank McKenzie, the former commander of the U.S. military's Central Command, thanks so much for joining us.